Howdy folks, I have tempted and teased you enough with introductory material. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're finally going to prove the recurrence relation for the bell numbers. Quickly, to catch you up to speed, if you haven't seen the previous lessons, the bell number BN is the number of partitions of a set of N objects. And in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving that to find a bell number, say BN plus one, so the N plus one the bell number, we can calculate this using the previous bell numbers by summing from k equals zero to k equals n, n choose k multiplied by the bell number b k. So this is the very nice recurrence relation for the bell numbers we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. One more time, remember the bell number b n or b n plus one tells us the number of ways we can partition a set of n plus one objects. That's what the bell number b n plus one is. I'll leave links in the description to previous lessons I've done introducing part partitions of sets, introducing bell numbers, and explaining where this recurrence relation comes from without proving it. So if after the proof you're still not quite sure about some of the details, you'll definitely want to check out some of those lessons, and you might even want to start watching some of those lessons before you watch the rest of this one. We're going to get into it though. It's a pretty straightforward proof, all things considered, and we'll start writing it in blue. So let's say we've got a set of n plus one elements, which we'll represent like this, a set containing one, two, and so on, all the way up to some n plus one element. Of course, the actual elements in the set don't matter. All that matters is the number of elements in the set. That's what's going to determine the number of ways we can partition the set. So you can think of these numbers as just labels for whatever set we happen to be partitioning. And let me redraw the bracket at the end because I accidentally drew it really small. That looks a little nicer. So we're trying to find the number of ways we can partition this generic set of n plus one objects. That's the bell number b n plus one. Now, in order to figure this out in a way that uses the previous bell numbers, Naturally, we're going to have to find a way to consider some smaller sets where those other bell numbers are going to come in handy. So how could we do that? Well, we know if we have just some given partition of this set of n plus 1 objects, certainly the last object there, n plus 1, has to be an element of some part of the partition. Call that part a1. And let's say that the cardinality of this part of the partition that contains n plus 1, the cardinality of this part of the partition, let's just say it's equal to k plus 1. Thus, it contains the object n plus 1, and it contains k other objects as well. What are the possible values of k? Well, k could be as small as 0, meaning that the only object a1 contains is that n plus 1 object, or k could be as big as n, meaning that a1 contains n plus 1 objects, as in all objects of the set have been put into the same part. That's another possible partition. Okay, so there are still some elements unaccounted for, right? The total set here, we'll call this set S, it's got a total of n plus one objects, and now we're saying if we partition it, one of those parts, say A1, includes the element n plus one. So let's say we get rid of this part, A1. Suppose we subtract it from the set S, and we consider the set S minus that part A1. How many elements are left? How many elements are outside of this part that contains n plus 1? Well, the set S has n plus 1 elements total, and we're removing k plus 1 of them, because we're removing all of the elements of A1. So it's just n plus 1 minus k plus 1. That's the number of elements left that we have to partition. We know that k plus 1 of the elements have been put in A1, and we have n plus 1 minus k plus 1 elements left. What is n plus 1 minus k plus 1? Well, it's just n minus k plus 1 minus 1, which is just n minus k. 
So there are n minus k objects left to partition outside of our part A1. So what we've done here is sort of split the partition of our uh, set S into two sections that we're considering. We've got our part A1 that contains uh, k plus 1 objects, including n plus 1, and then we've got the other n minus k objects that still need to be partitioned. So let's count the number of ways that these two things could happen. For some given value of k, how many different parts are there containing k plus 1 elements that also contains the element n plus 1? Well, if we're guaranteeing that the part contains the element n plus 1, then we just have k elements left to pick to put in the part a1. So we've got to choose k elements. How many elements do we have to choose from? Well, we've already put n plus 1 in the part a1, so we have all of the other elements left to choose from, all n other elements. So there are n choose k total parts of cardinality k plus 1 that we could put the element n plus 1 into. Now for every one of those possible parts a1 that n plus 1 could belong to, how many ways could we partition the remaining n minus k elements? Well, the number of partitions on n minus k elements is a bell number. It's the bell number b n minus k. And now look at this, it looks like we're starting to get somewhere. So what we've just gone over, this expression, this gives us for a given value of k, this gives us the number of partitions of this set on n plus 1 objects, where n plus 1 belongs to a part that has k plus 1 total objects. That's what this expression gives us. However, we know that k can be as small as 0 or as big as n. So to count up all possible partitions of this set, all we have to do is add this expression to itself over and over for all possible values of k. Just like that, that's the vast majority of the logic in the proof. If you understand me up to now, I think we will be golden. Now let's finish things off. So all we have to do to find the bell number bn plus 1, all we have to do is take this sum from k equals 0 to the maximum possible value of k, which is n, of n choose k times the bell number bn minus k. That's how we find that next bell number bn plus 1. And let me just rewrite that bn plus 1 because it's looking kind of crooked. So this is our expression for bn plus 1. Okay, so what's going on here? This doesn't look quite like that. It looks pretty close, but not quite. Well, let's make it work. So look at this. We've got a factor, a binomial coefficient here, n choose k. By the symmetric property of binomial coefficients, n choose k is the same as n choose n minus k. I'll leave a link in the description to a proof of that fact. The basic idea is that n choose n minus k is the same as picking k elements to not choose, which is of course n choose k. Again, there's a link to a proof of that down in the description. Okay, so then what is this sum equal to? Can we show that this is equal to this? Well, indeed we can. We really don't have much work left to do here. Let's just write out what the terms of this sum look like. We start at k equals 0. So that's going to be n choose n. Starting at k equals 0, we're going to have n choose n times b n. Then k is going to go up to 1. And we'll have n choose n minus 1 multiplied by the bell number b n minus 1. And it's going to continue in this way, with this and this going down by 1 in each term, going down by 1. Finally, I wish I had a little more room here, but it's going to end with the final term at k equals n. That's going to be n choose 0 n choose 0 multiplied by the bell number b0. So look at this. This is the sum we want just written in reverse order. We've got n choose 0 times b0, that's the first term of this sum, and then these are going up by 1 this way each term. So what I'm saying is this is the exact same 
as this sum, the sum from k equals zero to k equals n of n choose k times the bell number bk, just written in reverse order. And of course, it's just a finite sum, so flipping the order that we're adding the terms in doesn't change anything at all. Because look, you know, what's the first term of this sum gonna be? It's when k equals zero. So we have n choose zero times b zero, and they're just gonna keep incrementing up by one until we get to the last term where k equals n will have n choose n times the bell number bn. That's the proof. All right, Whew, could have taken a few more breaths during that proof. Hope that explanation was clear. So that's how we prove the recurrence relation for the bell numbers. To find the bell number bn plus one, all we have to do is take the sum from k equals zero to k equals n of n choose k times the bell number bk. Now let's just go over what I think is the trickiest part of this proof one more time, where we go, you know, from here talking about our arbitrary partition to this sort of expression. The logic is the n plus first element, so this element n plus one, in any partition of this set, n plus one has to be in some part of the partition. We call that part A1. Suppose A1 has k plus one elements. Thus, it has our guaranteed element n plus one, as well as k other elements. k could be as small as zero, meaning it has no other elements. It could be as large as n, meaning it has all of the other elements. Regardless, for any given value of k, there is a total of n choose k ways we could have a partite set that contains n plus one as well as k other elements. Because we have n other elements to choose from, we've got to choose k of them, so there's n choose k total ways we could have a part like that for each value of k. Then we have n minus k other elements that still need to be partitioned, and that of course is the bell number bn minus k. That's the total number of ways we could partition those remaining elements. Thus, we had that for any given value of k, the number of partitions of our set S that has n plus one in a part that contains k plus one elements, the expression for that was n choose k times b n minus k. n choose k is the same as n choose n minus k, and then uh, we just have to sum this expression up over all possible values of k. That counts all the partitions. Bada bing, bada boom. There's our proof. Again, if uh, you're foggy on any of this stuff, check the description. There'll be a link to relevant lessons that might help you out. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this wonderful recurrence relation for the bell numbers. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest. Map lessons on the internet.